In this video, we're going to finish up talking about this question up here, which is if two species compete for the same resources, can they coexist? Uh, last class, we talked a lot about resource partitioning. So we talked about temporal partitioning, morphological par partitioning, different ways that organisms um, basically utilize a resource, but in a different way to minimize competition with each other. Now, the, one of the things we're going to add on now is something called character displacement. And so what happens with character displacement is when the actual competition between two organisms um, causes them to evolve to become different over time that helps them better partition their resources. So I'll give you a cool example of this. Uh, these are Galapagos finches. These are two different species. So here's one species and here's another species and they have different size beaks. Okay. And when they live um, by themselves, so for example, uh, G. fortis here lives on Daphne Island. This is the average size of their beak. And their beaks are that size because they eat medium-sized seeds. So they have medium-sized beaks to eat medium-sized seeds. Okay. And when they live alone, that's what they, they have. That's what their beaks look like. This species up here, um, on this island, you only find this particular species. And when they live on that island by themselves, they have pretty much the same um, size beak, right? These two species would compete with each other for the same speeds, the same seeds. So what gets interesting is if these two species live on the same island and character displacement was occurring, what would we predict? Well, what we would predict is that perhaps they would shift so they don't overlap with each other. So for example, maybe this one would become a specialist and start to evolve a bigger beak to eat bigger seeds, and maybe this one would evolve a smaller beak. And in this species, that's what we find. So on, this, on these two, two particular islands, um, the two bird species both live on those islands, and on islands where you find both of them, um, G. fortis has larger beaks and they feed only on larger seeds, and the other species has smaller beaks and they only feed on smaller, spe smaller seeds. And so again, what's happened here is the reason it's character displacement is because they've actually evolved adaptations to help them partition um, this resource. So we're going to keep building this list here. And so um, to answer the next, to fill in the rest of this list, we're going to do a little case study that involves uh, mosquitoes. So we're going to look at a case study that's about competition between two different species of mosquitoes, the yellow fever mosquito and the Asian tiger mosquito. So yellow fever mosquito um, most famously ca carries yellow fever, but it also carries other human diseases as well. Um, the Asian tiger mosquito can carry West Nile virus, it can carry dengue, and also Eastern equine encephalitis. So both of these carry diseases that can impact human beings. And so what we're going to look at is competition in the United States. Okay, so the blue region here is for the yellow fever mosquito, where it could potentially live in, this is based on 2017 climate. And so the blue area is very likely, and then sort of up here it's basically too cold. Okay. Um, and this here is the range where the Asian tiger mosquito can live. And you can see they overlap, you know, almost directly, and they are in fierce competition with each other. Uh, what really limits mosquito growth is standing water. So they love things like this, where they can, uh, they use that water to lay their, their eggs and their larvae will grow in here. Um, and so they would compete over this limited resource. So we're looking at um, just Florida and um, Aedes aegypti, that's the, um, yellow fever mosquito has been in Florida for quite a long time, okay? Um, but the Asian tiger mosquito didn't show up until the 80s. And so we're going to look at what happens when this new competitor shows up. So this shows you the range of where the yellow fever mosquito lived prior to the arrival of the Asian tiger mosquito, pretty much all of Florida. And so this is what happened when um, the Asian tiger mosquito first showed up. We only found it in a couple counties. Over the next few years, it sort of spread some more, spread some more until it was ubiquitous, so found everywhere in Florida. Um, and what's interesting is if you then look at where the 
Aedes aegypti, the yellow fever mosquito, lived after this invasion by its competitor. Well, it got outcompeted in this entire range up here. So, so that would be competitive exclusion up in this region. And then down here, we do have coexistence. So the question is, why did it outcompete it up here, but down here they were able to coexist? And after a lot of experimentation, what it turns out is that the Asian tiger mosquito is the better competitor. It's better at producing offspring more quickly. It's the better competitor, except when it's really, really hot. And so in regions where it's hot, um, the yellow fever mosquito tends to do a little bit better. And so then in these areas where it is warmer, um, you're able to actually see coexistence between the two. So this is an example of point three here, which is that sometimes environmental factors might favor one competitor over the other, and that might allow coexistence. Another way you can get coexistence is if you have predation, where predation, uh, where the predator is feeding on the better competitor. Okay, and so if that happens, it can cause less competition, you can get coexistence. So still we're looking at mosquitoes, um, we are looking at the yellow fever mosquito again, but then a different species of mosquito. And so first, when you look at with no predators present, okay, this is how well the mosquito does. And so with no predators present, the yellow fever mosquito does very well and it will actually outcompete the eastern tree hole mosquito. We can see that this one's a little higher and that one's a little bit lower. However, if a predator is present, the predators prefer to eat the yellow fever mosquitoes. And so when that predator is present, actually the eastern tree hole mosquito doesn't get outcompeted. So predators or herbivores may limit the superior competitor, and if they do so, you can get coexistence. And then last, um, some species need a regular disturbance, so something like a fire to come through, um, and so that might allow them to coexist. So for example, this little flower that you see here um, can only exist when there aren't bigger plants that are shading it out, right? They would get out-competed by these bigger plants that would shade all the sun. And so you tend to only find these type of plants um, when you've recently had a fire come through. So if there's a regular disturbance, that might favor coexistence of more than one species.